Hello Geneva, and welcome to Officially Speaking. I'm your host, Kevin Starr. Each month, we sit down with one of our local elected officials to get the latest with your city council. Today, I'm joined by third ward alderman, Dean Kilberg. Dean, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come back and visit with you on uh, Officially Speaking. I think this is uh, my second opportunity to do this uh, since I've been elected. And, uh, it's a great opportunity to talk a little bit with, uh, with the community about uh, what's happening in the Third Ward as well as across the city of Geneva. Well, we're going to have plenty of topics uh, talking about our upcoming budget planning, uh, taxes and such, but I know that you wanted to have the floor for a little bit to talk about some issues that were concerned to you. Yeah. No, it, uh, it's been our pleasure, my wife Linda and myself, to live in Geneva now for 30 years. Uh, and. Uh, we made a choice 30 years ago when we moved here from Iowa uh, to try to decide on a community where we would re relocate to and uh, uh, we've had no regrets about that decision that we made. We've seen Geneva grow from about 9,900 people when we entered Geneva for the first time in 1987 to uh, over 22,000 people today and uh, in many ways this, the city is still the, uh, the quaint and charming community that it was when we first moved here. Uh, we've seen development, we've seen growth, and uh, in many ways I feel as though that growth has been well managed. Uh, if you looked at the uh, publication of West Suburban Living uh, recently, uh, as you talked with our, as they talked with our neighbors about if in fact they weren't living where they were, you know what their choice was in many instances? It was right here in Geneva. So as a resident of Geneva and as an elected official in Geneva, uh, I really feel good about uh, where the community is and the direction the community is headed. That doesn't mean that we, have, doesn't, well, that we don't have challenges, we certainly do. But I think for the most part, the city's on the right track and uh, I wanna thank, uh, obviously, the elected officials, those that preceded me, as well as uh, the staff that has served this community over the years. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that uh, the Geneva staff has taken a great deal of pride in is uh, financial reporting and transparency and I know that you've noted and uh, residents can find on the city's website uh, the three recognitions that the City of Geneva staff has received for financial reporting. And uh, uh, these just don't seem to drop from the sky. Uh, the last report that was presented by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States uh, recognized Geneva as only one of 13 communities in the state of Illinois that provided the types of reports that we do. And there are other recognitions as well as related to reporting, and I won't dwell on that. But uh, uh, as we talk about budgets and tax, uh, I thought that would be a, a good segue to uh, start our discussion today and, and visit a little bit more about some of these things in detail. 100% agree. Uh, so as we jump into the issues, uh, one of the more recent decisions made by the City Council has been um, establishing some sales tax agreements within the community to help jumpstart some uh, vacant properties, and most notably the Dominics and a uh, vacant property on North 3rd Street. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about these details of these plans and what hopes to be accomplished? Very good. Uh, our Economic Development Department has been busy over the last few years uh, trying to rekindle or uh, 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 develop businesses in some properties that have been idle for a long time. The first property was the uh, Dominic's property on Randall Road and as we all know this, uh, this property was vacant for some time uh, and uh, I think a lot of the challenges related to uh, uh, the recession of t uh, 2008 and the ad advent of uh, the internet and, and uh, the fact that uh, a lot of people are shopping online now and uh, as you drive Randall Road, you see uh, vacant properties, you see uh, businesses that are liquidating. I just was in uh, Batavia yesterday and the uh, religious bookstore there is, is vacating. And uh, in visiting with the, uh, the clerk at the time, she said, well, essentially, uh, most of our business has gone internet. And uh, so, you know, how do we respond as a community to these changes that are taking place in our society? And uh, this first project, though Dominic's project, uh, we were approached uh, a few years ago by a development group out of Hoffman Estates called uh, the Crown Group, who had an interest in redeveloping the, um, the Dominic's property. This, uh, this was delayed in many ways by Albertsons, the grocery chain, 
who held the lease and blocked uh, future development fearing the entry of another grocery store on the site. But uh, Crown came to the city, worked with our economic development department on a business plan to, uh, to rejuvenate this property. And uh, this would really be what I would call a private-public partnership. And uh, what it entailed was an, an economic incentive agreement that would result in a 50-50 sales split from the, uh, the business crown plans to attract to the location. Now their plans are not to develop a grocery store on that site, but to split the property into three to five different businesses possibly, invest um, upwards of maybe $10 million in rejuvenating the property. That would include the facade of the building, dividing up the, 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 the single uh, property into multiple, uh, multiple storefronts. Uh, it would also in, involve uh, some extensive uh, landscaping uh, work as it relates to uh, the, uh, the landscaping adjacent or right along Randall Road so that the, the property could be more visible. So uh, that uh, uh, was worked out and uh, uh, really it provides Crown with the potential to, uh, to see about $5 million in sales tax revenue if, uh, if, uh, if the plan that has been developed works to perfection. Now, uh, uh, this uh, would allow Crown to reinvest in the property, attract businesses, and the, at, at, and the benefit to the city would be that you'd be bringing uh, occupied storefronts and you'd be bringing tax revenue to the city that we're, we're not enjoying at the present time. So that property I think uh, looks very encouraging and, uh, and work on that property will begin shortly. The second property that you referred to or you, you uh, ask about would be the uh, property on North 3rd Street. And many who have lived in Geneva for over uh, uh, 10 years know that this was the old J.C. Uh, Licht. Uh, paint store and that it sat idle since about 2008 when it was vacated. The, uh, the owner of Nosh, uh, Mike Dixon, uh, the restaurant on James Street, uh, needed more space and he came to the city asking for, for their thoughts and uh, ideas as it relates to the redevelopment of this property on North 3rd. And working together with economic development they came up with a plan and uh, brought to the city council a few months ago as it relates to uh, a tax incentive agreement. And uh, this, uh, this plan uh, really uh, will help fund what I call sort of infrastructure. The building has been vacated and according to state statute, this is the type of agreement that, uh, that can work for both the, uh, the, 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 uh, the business owner that wants to occupy the property as well as the city. Uh, let's get that, uh, that property back on the tax rolls. Let's get, a, get it working for both the property owner as well as for the city. Uh, this, uh, this plan, uh, the total uh, development of the property for the, for the Dixons came to about $1.8 million. The city is going to invest uh, potentially upwards if, uh, if fully appreciated uh, somewhere maybe between fifty dollars and $100,000 in incentives or tax rebates uh, to, uh, to help with the project and, uh, and help get uh, get that, uh, that business going again and helping to expand what we have going on 3rd Street to North 3rd Street. Uh, this is going to create uh, obviously additional tax revenue for the city. Uh, it's going to create jobs. It's going to help uh, uh, improve the overall economic climate of the downtown. An issue that has certainly garnered a great deal of discussion at the City Council uh, has been the places for eating tax. And we know uh, last fall that the City Council approved uh, the places for eating tax to start in 2017. Uh, there was, in March, there was a, a consideration to possibly rescind that measure, and now it's since been tabled. I'm sure there's gonna be a great deal of discussion that's gonna take place in April. So if you had a crystal ball, how would you see this playing out at this point? That's, that's an interesting question, and uh, one that I'm sure that uh, has confused uh, uh, residents of the community as well as, other, uh, as well as some of the restaurant owners that have had a, uh, an increasing level of interest in this development. Uh, this was first brought forward uh, last fall as an opportunity for the city to uh, generate additional revenue uh, that uh, uh, we're needing as we experience shortfalls uh, in, in several areas of the typical revenue flow that the city has lived off of. Uh, 
Uh, at that time, I was opposed to it and voted against it. And uh, uh, the city moved forward with it. Uh, and essentially, uh, as you said, initially set a date of January 1st for implementation. As uh, restaurant owners came forward and expressed concerns, this was pushed back to a May 1st implementation date, and there's been ongoing discussion as it relates to this topic ever since. Uh, at our last council meeting, uh, it was decided to, uh, to table uh, uh, this, uh, this issue, which in essence sort of uh, uh, left the impression that uh, this was going to uh, be implemented effective May 1st. Uh, I guess uh, based off of my read of the council and where I stand uh, myself, I don't think that's ever going to happen on May 1st and that uh, uh, the delay and those that voted to table I feel felt it was would be helpful for the city to take a look at its budget and to see better where we're at going into the, uh, the fiscal year that starts uh, uh, May 1st uh, through April 30th and see where our revenues are coming from and then uh, map another strategy uh, to meet our needs, uh, both short-term and long-term. Um, I guess uh, if you ask me if this is going to be implemented on May 1st and that it would be effective May 1st, uh, I don't believe that's going to happen. Well, anyone that has followed uh, Illinois state government uh, throughout the years has known that they've been having uh, quite a deal of uh, trying to get a state budget approved and some of the topics or solutions they've discussed have been possibly taking a greater share of income tax revenue that has gone to municipalities as well as proposing a potential property tax freeze. If those scenarios were to take place, how would you expect Geneva to approach uh, budget planning from a revenue standpoint? Mm -hmm. You know, I think the interesting dichotomy about this whole process is the fact that the state expects the municipalities to develop and have in place a budget for the upcoming year while the state is still trying to figure out over the last two years what their budget is and how they're going to come up with the revenue and the, and the draconian shortfall that they have in so many areas as it relates to funding. Uh, uh, as we look at Geneva specifically, uh, I feel as though uh, with, a, with the likelihood of a property tax freeze, and I think that's inevitable if you, if you listen to the grand compromise that's evolving out of Springfield these days, I think a property tax freeze is coming. What uh, that leaves the city of Geneva with then uh, is uh, uh, the, uh, the reality or the inevitability that uh, we're going to have to find some ways to generate additional revenue because, you know, really over the last 10 years, the Geneva uh, uh, municipal government has cu been cutting expenses and in, in, in effectively managing its budgets. As we know, the city of Geneva is a non-home rule community that is subject to the property tax extension limitation laws dictated by the state. Uh, the state limits the increase in the amount of property tax extended to the uh, annual change in the consumer price index. So based off of all that, uh, Geneva is really given about a 0.7 percent increase uh, in property taxes to live with and uh, uh, anyone that uh, that lives in Geneva knows that uh, just the reality of the world today is is that live, uh, an increase of less than one percent is difficult to live within. Um, I think one of the positives on the horizon as it relates to the city of Geneva as it relates to uh, to its finances is, is the fact that uh, over the next couple of years the City of Geneva will dramatically reduce uh, its debt obligation. Uh, currently that debt obligation or debt service uh, for the city is about two million dollars per year. By 2019, the 2019-2020 uh, budget year, uh, that, 20 million, or that two million dollar figure will reduce to about six hundred thousand dollars. Uh, these improvements were important decisions to benefit the city's. Uh, these these improvements were important decisions to benefit the city's infrastructure and quality of of life needs for the residents. Uh, I think one of those big expenditures that we're going to be retiring would be the, uh, that will be moving toward retirement would be the the water treatment plant, and uh, and others. Uh, I think though, as we look at this this whole area. 
uh, I think we need to realize that the infrastructure in Geneva is, is, is deteriorating. As you look at our water lines, you look at our sewers, you look at our stormwater systems, you know, we have to realize that the city of Geneva is 182 years old and a lot of this infrastructure uh, was put in place initially over 100 years ago. So uh, these are going to be challenges and as these uh, systems wear out, a lot of times they're not very visible from street level, but they're, they're areas of expenditure that need to be addressed. Uh, you know, I think one of the encouraging things as it relates to infrastructure is the city's embarking on a $12 million upgrade of our waste treatment system. And these improvements will, uh, will address the, the long-term capacity needs of Geneva, Geneva as we continue to grow with new technologies and will address uh, clean water standards required by both the state and the federal government. Now that's a long answer to a short question, but uh, obviously as you look at 37 different budgets within the city's overall budget, there's a lot of give and take and balancing that needs to be done. It's, in many ways, I would compare it to a family budget where you have 37 different line items. And as you take your paycheck and you divide those, those 37 areas out with uh, a certain dollar amount dedicated to each of those and uh, a related expenditure, trying to balance those and keep those all in sync, uh, that's the challenge and the requirement of the city and as anyone that balances a family budget knows, it's not always easy to do. Thank you. So as the show airs throughout April, City Council will be busy tackling the budget. When you approach a budget cycle, what are the things that you look for as far as the budget planning process goes? I feel Geneva has a good process in place. Uh, our staff, uh, our previous uh, city manager and uh, Ms. Dawkins, who who serves currently as our city manager, uh, drew up a, uh, a budget development schedule uh, that was presented to the council uh, late last fall. And we started on uh, November 4th with a strategy session where the city council staff and the mayor uh, took a full day, a Friday, to discuss the budget uh, process, uh, trying to outline priorities talking about revenue, talking about expenditure, uh, expenditures, talking about major capital expenditures that we're looking at over the next uh, five years. All these things come into play. From our direction and from our insight coming out of that meeting, then staff met over uh, the months of December, January, developing their respective budgets by department. And uh, we're in the throes of narrowing that and approving a budget then for the upcoming year that starts May 1st. On April 17th, we need to finalize a budget. We're gonna have discussions as a city council on that topic over the next few meetings, and we'll work toward uh, hopefully a, a, a budget that treats the community fairly. Uh, in that regard, the taxpayer who I'm, who's, who I'm talking about, as well as meet our needs. and. Uh, that presents, uh, obviously, from year to year challenges, but uh, I'm sure it's a conclusion that will, uh, will carry us into the new year in hopefully good shape. A question that I've posed to actually a few other aldermen in previous shows, but I still find curious to hear your thoughts on, is development in Geneva. Um, throughout uh, 2016, there have been uh, a few projects that have called for uh, higher density in the city, and I know that's been part of the city's uh, master plan. And at the same time, there have been uh, residents that have been uh, adamantly opposed to a few of these developments because they're thinking it's gonna change the character of the community. So how do you go about balancing those competing interests? That's a uh, excellent question. And as an alderman, as a, as a city council, there are, uh, there are several voices that, uh, that come to the table as uh, it would relate to any type of development. And with any type of development in the community, there's, uh, there's a balancing act. Uh, I think that there are a list of factors that come into play when you look at development that all uh, enter into the equation and ultimately hopefully leads the, uh, the city to the right decision as it relates to future development. Some of the things, and I, I, I developed a short list here as it relates to your question, 
The first would be the plan commission, the fact that we have, besides the city council and the 10 aldermen sitting at the table, we have a plan commission that's very representative of the community. They provide a lot of direction and insight before it even gets to the council. There's a lot of uh, issues as it relates to compliance with the existing zoning policies. In other words, there's guidelines, there's rules in place, and those rules that were drafted over time play an important role in helping us arrive at good decisions. I think it's important when someone wants to come to Geneva and develop in Geneva that they engage the property owners adjacent to the site that they're going to hopefully develop. I think there needs to be positive communication. When that takes place, I think it helps the process. I think I, I, uh, I know and I believe that an important consideration in all of this is the developer and the financial strength and the stability of the developer. We want developers to come to Geneva that are financially strong, that have a track record of successful development. I think that uh, it's also important that they have a track record of working effectively with other governments where they built projects. Uh, the other consideration is, uh, does uh, it meet the demand of the community? Is there a need that they've outlined with their development that meets the needs of the community? Will it fit in the neighborhood? And is the neighborhood accepting and open uh, generally to this type of development? And another important consideration would be, does the product meet the transitional needs of our community? Uh, we all see residents moving from raising a family to retirement. And the type of product and the type of uh, housing arrangement that they're looking for is quite different from uh, what for a long time traditionally served the city of Geneva. As our, as our community somewhat ages in place, our needs into the next decade are going to be much different. And are we meeting those needs? And uh, there's also financial considerations tied to that. Is that type of property something that a retiring resident on a fixed income can afford? The other consideration here would be uh, commuters and millennials. Uh, we want millennials to come to our community and live in rental properties or to purchase townhomes or whatever it might be. Uh, they play an important part in the community because they keep our business dis di districts vibrant. Uh, they bring dollars uh, and uh, millennials like to spend money, which helps our local economy. So are we meeting their needs? And, uh, and uh, they bring a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a mix of uh, population to the community, I think, that offsets the fact that we are aging in place. So we need to attract those types of people as well. Finally, uh, finding a way to say yes or no uh, relating to development is a challenging path and that requires the input of multiple voices in the community. And uh, hopefully uh, I've outlined here a little bit how I process development and uh, why some development I support and some development I don't. As we look forward to the rest of 2017, do you feel like there's any issues or challenges ahead for Geneva that we haven't previously talked about uh, on the show? Uh, there's a lot going on in Geneva right now because we're in the throes of an election. We have five aldermanic seats that are all contested. So, uh, and we have a mayoral race that's also contested. And uh, this is good. I think elections are good, uh, especially contested elections are good for a community. It's good for the elective process. It causes people to reach down and, and really express their views as it relates to any number of different issues, both within their ward as well as across the community. So this is, this is an important event, and it's equally, if not more important, I think, for the community as the presidential election where everybody tends to, to want to get out and vote. Uh, our election is on uh, April 4th. I would encourage residents of the city of Geneva to uh, exercise their democratic uh, their, uh, right and, and get out and express their opinions uh, for the candidates that they believe in and, and feel strongly about. In addition to the election, uh, we have Metra uh, expanding the third, uh, the third rail uh, here in Geneva that will cross the Fox River. That project will commence uh, over the next year and uh, that will change the downtown somewhat. Uh, uh, there will be a lot of activity on South 3rd Street as, as that project gets underway so the community needs to be aware of it and there are going to be inconveniences resulting from it. 
our waste treatment plant. Uh, this will also take place uh, over the next few years. Uh, uh, the site uh, will uh, undergo a $12 million facelift, uh, bringing new technologies, as I mentioned, and complying with a lot of state and federal regulations. Uh, the staff, uh, the, the city has uh, given the set, uh, staff the charge to do a, uh, a uh, organizational study. Uh, you know, how do we best meet the needs of the city moving forward as far as staffing? So that's going to be interesting to see the results of that study uh, uh, in 2017. The Southeast Industrial Park is also on the, on the drawing board as that continues to move forward uh, as, as funds uh, that the city, uh, limited funds that the city has available to, uh, to press that forward. Uh, part of that would be the Couts Road extension and we have studies that are currently taking place where we'd extend Couts Road then from 38 South into the Industrial Park servicing that area from the north. We have the East Side Corridor project uh, that uh, hopefully will be moving ahead uh, in the months and, and years ahead, uh, which would uh, certainly improve and make more attractive the, the streetscape as we, uh, as we head toward West Chicago. Um, finally, I think all of the community is certainly interested in the redevelopment of the Mill Race property and what that corner will look like in the future. And there are a lot of uh, adjacent uh, uh, issues relating to development in that immediate area that I think will be driven off of what actually happens on that corner in the, the property that the Shodines now own. Uh, so uh, if you sit back uh, at a local diner and you say, well, there's not much going on in Geneva, well, uh, hold on to your seat because there's a lot of things on the horizon, a lot of things that are in the works, and it's going to be an exciting uh, 2017 in Geneva and on into 2018. That is all the time we have for Officially Speaking. I'd like to thank Alderman Kilberg for his time and insight into the City Council. Thanks, Kevin. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to be here and share some time with you talking about uh, issues impacting Geneva residents. We also thank you for watching. We hope to tune in again next month to get the official word from your local government. Mm -hmm.